Hello, and welcome to this presentation, Decoding SPMI with MXO Series Oscilloscopes. In this presentation, we'll show you how to use Rodian Schwartz MXO Series Oscilloscopes to decode the System Power Management Interface, or SPMI protocol. This presentation assumes a basic familiarity with the operation of MXO Series Oscilloscopes, as well as a basic understanding of the SPMI protocol. If you're unfamiliar with either of these topics, or if you'd like a brief review, you might want to watch the presentation Getting Started with MXO Series Oscilloscopes and or the presentation Understanding SPMI before beginning this presentation. Rodian Schwartz MXO Series Oscilloscopes support a wide variety of serial decodes. Decoding SPMI is enabled by software license K550. Decoding can be performed using analog channels or logic slash digital channels. Note that digital channels require the MXO B1 option as well. In addition to decoding and displaying SPMI serial data, the MXO also supports numerous other useful SPMI decoding functions, such as filtering on frame or command type and exporting captured frames in different formats. The first step in decoding an SPMI bus with the MXO is to select bus from the list of items in the bottom right corner of the screen then select SPMI from the list of available protocol types. This will also create a small box labeled SPMI in the signal bar near the bottom left corner of the screen. This box can be clicked at any time to bring up the SPMI configuration dialog. The next step is defining which channel is connected to which SPMI wire, S data or serial data, or S clock or serial clock. As mentioned earlier, these connections can be made either using the analog channel inputs and standard probes, or by using the logic channel connectors attached to logic probes. In this presentation, we'll be using analog channels, but the configuration and analysis features are essentially identical for both types of inputs. There are two additional SPMI setup options. In addition to their unique identifiers, Devices on an SPMI bus may also have a shared group identifier, or GSID. If use GSID is set to on, a specific GSID can be entered. The second option is a glitch filter, which can be used to filter out glitches, or short duration voltage spikes, on the bus. In this case, the glitch width is also user configurable. Before enabling the decode, it's always a good idea to visually verify waveforms and channel settings. A common issue in serial decoding is incorrect vertical and horizontal settings, such as the wrong time base or the wrong volts per division setting. In this example, the channels connected to serial clock and serial data both have appropriate vertical and horizontal scaling. The signals are on screen, and the time base is long enough to capture one or more SPMI frames. The auto set function of the MXO can also be very helpful when configuring the vertical and horizontal systems. Another potential issue is too small of a sample rate. A sampling rate of at least two and a half times the dot clock rate is the standard recommendation for serial data decoding. Now that we've verified that our input channel levels and time base are configured properly, the next step is setting thresholds. These are the voltage values that define a logical zero and a logical one. Here are the thresholds for S data and S clock are set to 1.5 and 2 volts respectively. If we enable show threshold lines, we can see that for this example, these are appropriate thresholds since the configured voltage values fall almost directly between the high and low states of our clock and data signals. A hysteresis value can also be configured independently for each of these thresholds. After parameters have been configured and acquisition started, the decoded SPMI frames are shown on the screen along with the analog or digital waveforms. Here we see the analog serial data and serial clock signals, as well as a visual representation of the serial data frames. The decode table at the bottom of the screen shows the decoded SPMI frames, which includes information such as error states, start times, frame type, device and register addresses, etc. Clicking on a frame shows a detailed decode of each element of the selected frame. 
One useful feature in the display options is zoom coupling. When zoom coupling is enabled, selecting a row in the decode table zooms in on that frame. For example, here we've clicked on frame 5 in the decode table, and the MXO zooms into that particular frame, showing both the analog SData signal in green, as well as the individual SPMI fields, such as the sequence start condition, sub address, ID, parity bit, etc. Data in the MXO's decode table can be displayed in a variety of formats. These include hexadecimal, octal, binary, ASCII, etc. The format can be changed both during and after decoding. Filtering can be applied to the decode results so as to display only frames which match user-defined conditions. The first step is selecting the type or types of frames to filter on, after which edit can be used to enable filtering on patterns or fields within the frame. The field values can be specified in various ways, including the use of X for don't care. In addition, filters can be created to filter on various types of errors. For example, frames that fail the parity check, or frames that are knacked, or negatively acknowledged, by the receiver. Let's look at a simple example of filtering. After we deselect everything except the extended write and extended read frame types, the decode table shows only results for these two types of frames. Recall that we could use the edit button to the right of each frame type to filter on specific address or data values within these frames as well. Decoded results can be exported by choosing export from the SPMI menu. The supported export formats include HTML, CSV, XML, and Python. The CSV example here shows the type of data included in the export. Timing and summary information is provided line by line, followed by the decoded values for each individual frame. Let's end with a brief summary. SPMI decodes on MXO series oscilloscopes are enabled by the K550 option. Connections to the device under test can be made using either the scope's analog channels and or using logic channels. Both analog waveforms and decoded serial data can be displayed simultaneously. Decoded frames are shown in a decode table in per frame and per field formats. It's also possible to filter by frame type or frame content. Decoded serial data can be exported as CSV and other data formats. And finally, remember that it's usually a good idea to check basic oscilloscope settings, such as levels, thresholds, time base, etc., before starting decodes. This concludes our presentation, Decoding SPMI with MXO Series Oscilloscopes. If you'd like to learn more about serial protocols, decoding serial signals, or Rodian Schwartz oscilloscopes, please see the links in the video description. Thanks for watching.